Good morning. Those who are able, please stand for our call to worship. Come gather in the presence of Christ, who is our friend and healer. We are here, and in our worship, we yearn for hope and comfort. Let us reach out to the heart of Jesus, who is our life. We encounter our Lord, who makes us whole. Here we are welcome and loved and cherished. Here we are, the people of God. Let us worship God. Let us now share with one another a sign of Christ's peace. Yes, and you are. Welcome to be seated as you've had an opportunity to share the love and fellowship of Jesus with one another. Welcome to First Presbyterian Church. It's good to be together and to know that we have others worshiping with us online. Please note your attendance using the purple sign-in sheets in the pews as needed or online. There's a cell number you can text or email to let us know you are with us in worship today. As for announcements, now is the time to bring your Operation Christmas Child boxes so that Emily Johnson can take those and get them to where they need to be for delivery this week. They should have them in by Wednesday or? Wednesday would be good. Wednesday would be good. All right. And we have some of our Operation Christmas Child boxes right there on the chancel near the Lord's table so that we can send them out with our blessing and with love. Next Sunday, we are providing Thanksgiving box lunches to go from Westminster Hall immediately following worship. So just head on over there. This is for members and friends of the church and family and folks out in the community. 
So just head on over there. We've posted it in uh, some of the places nearby uh, on the, in our neighborhood so that uh, folks in the community will know also right after worship uh, next week. And you can pick up as many box lunches as you can use for your uh, household, for your friends, for your family. And those of our members who would like to stay and eat together are welcome to use Westminster Hall, the tables and the chairs. There's no hosted seating, but um, you're welcome to do that. Um, just we're not inviting in the whole community this year for obvious reasons. Um, next Sunday is also when we begin decorating the church for the holiday season. Again, right after worship or right after your box lunch uh, dinner. So uh, enjoy your meal and then come on back over here and help deck the halls, so to speak. And it is a great uh, group event to be a part of. And I know you'd enjoy um, putting in a little bit of time and, and effort and energy and uh, helping out with that. And now Emily Johnson has our Minute for Mission on our stewardship campaign, which uh, this year we're focusing as far as the minutes for mission on multi-generational aspects of our church. And I know Emily has some representations of that. So the bottom book, there you go. Bottom book it is. Sorry guys, it worked earlier. Of course. So, okay, I'll hold your place until you get set up. Thank you. I'll sit here and look important, but uh, I'm not, so don't worry about that. Yes, he is. No, I'm not. Okay. All right. directory from 1965. I know the picture was taken earlier there because of what I have on. Um, this was the beginning of the blessing shared by this church with us as a family. Through Sunday school, Texas, senior high, fish, choirs, many, many committees, and especially the church caravans, this church became a part of my extended family a place where I received much of my Christian upbringing and where I have felt the true love of Christ throughout the years. Over the years, we have received the church's blessings through Sunday morning services, various Bible studies, traveling the country through those caravans, having home communion brought when we were unable to attend. We have been blessed to have three weddings right here, three baptisms, and fortunate to have our church family surrounding us through our parents' funerals. This church also gave me, I'm sorry, support with cards, letters, and phone calls during my cancer treatment. I also feel as a family, we have been a blessing to the church by six of us out of this photo uh, participating on the church boards. We've been in Presbyterian women in circles, Sunday school teachers and officers. And in fact, back when the Sunday school class, the Better Bees was holding uh, their class, we had to get up and be here by eight o'clock because my dad fixed coffee for their Sunday school class every Sunday and we came to 8.30 service where oftentimes we were ushering. Another part of our, our church family is helping decorate the church for Christmas. And for this holiday, Carter and Cameron, the two little guys over here, are the youngest Johnsons who continue the, tr the tradition of setting up the nativity on the credenza every year, which their father, Matt, helps them do. I feel very blessed that my family and I have spent almost 60 years here at First Church. The blessings of this church have been a huge part in molding me into the person that I am today. Just as the directory photos went from black and white to full color, this year, as a stewardship committee, we chose to put color photos in our brochure that we are reaching out to you with. We didn't put a lot of words as far as sentences in it, but what we have done is given you a variety of activities 
that First Church has to offer and allow you to see where you can be a blessing. Sharing your times and talents is one form of stewardship. So another form is sharing your monetary fund. Through your pledge to the church, we can continue the work of this church. You are asked to prayerfully consider your pledge, a financial gift, and bring this completed pledge card back next Sunday or mail it in, if you so desire, to the church office. And during this next Sunday, we will bring these up and place them on the communion table if you are able. As we move forward, consider how you can be a blessing to our church. Share a blessing and be open to receiving the blessings that First Church has to offer. Thank you. Thank you. She's going to take a tour of the choir with her pictures. All of your, uh, what do they call those? The visual aids. Thank you. I needed a teacher to help me know what, remember what that is. Your visual aids. Exactly. Well, thank you, Emily. You did a marvelous job and uh, really spoke to my heart and I know spoke to the hearts of those gathered here and those worshiping online and just share that with other folks in the life of this church in your communities in your homes in your neighborhoods um, what a special blessing this church is are there any other announcements this morning any prayer requests yes Remembering Dan Washburn, who passed away and been a long-standing Presbyterian and Scout supporter, and we certainly do, and we'll be praying for his family. Yeah. Yes, uh, in the back and then up front. Yes. Wanda Outlaw also passed away. Okay, well, we'll be uh, keeping Wanda's family in our prayers. Yes, Ronnie. Yeah, John Huffman, he had a fall and fractured his hip and had a pin put in yesterday. Um, he's still in the hospital, maybe a few more days, but is doing well, and we are thankful for that, and we'll be praying for him. And for Sandra Drakovich, who has been his uh, companion and helper. Yeah. Well, if there are no other prayer requests, let us join our hearts and minds in our morning prayer. Gracious God, giver of all things, as hard as it may be for us to accept, we know deep down that nothing we have is truly our own. Everything we possess is on loan from you, a, a trust that we take care of as well as we can. Help us to look beyond what we would like to get and to see what we would like to be able to give. Help us use our time and talents to share with others the treasure of generosity and compassion and love creating a legacy of people who have come to praise you because through us they felt your care and provision. We pray your care and provision for those in need this day, those in financial need, those in need of healing and comfort, those in need of grace and peace. We pray for the families of Don Washburn and Wanda Outlaw, two faithful souls who have now joined you in the church triumphant. 
We pray especially for healing for John Huffman and strength and sense of peace for his companion, Sandra. We pray for Leroy McElvey and Rob Sullivan and Leo Bray, Jennifer Rowe Rankin, Will Ratcliffe, and the Reverend J.C. Harp. And for us, Lord, we pray that you would create in us what we need most of all, the faith to trust that you are able to provide for all that we truly need. Help us rely on you to take care of our earthly needs while we are taking care of the needs of others. We pray this in your sure and powerful name, using the words that you taught us saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. boss. <laughs> yes, sugar. Hold on. Hello. Hi. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sit down, please. I have a question for you. What do you want to say? Be nice. Yeah, be nice. <laughs> Let me ask you something. I don't need this today. Are you perfect? No. No? Are you perfect? Yes. Yes? <laughs> Maybe. Am I perfect? I don't know. Evelyn, are you perfect? You are? Is that why you're hitting your sister? <laughs> yeah. Milo, who's perfect? Jonah? Hmm. Who is perfect? Nate, who's perfect? God. God is perfect. And Jesus, yeah. So Jesus came and he was perfect, wasn't he? Have you ever tried to draw a, like a perfect picture? Huh. Or, a rocket ship. Or what? A rocket ship? Yeah. yeah but it's on sale. And there's always little mistakes, isn't there? But it still makes a beautiful picture, doesn't it? Even really great artists and musicians make mistakes sometimes, but sometimes the mistakes make them really good. Sometimes those mistakes make them look even more beautiful, don't you think? And we'd be nice. That's right. But even when Jesus came and when he was, even though he was perfect, he even cried out to God because he was afraid to die on the cross. But then, even though he was perfect, that's why we use Jesus whenever we do bad things and we sin, right? And we use Jesus so that we can get to heaven, right? What's going on here? Can we sit up? Okay. Let's pray. <laughs> I love you. Can we pray? Can we pray? Okay, let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for sending your perfect and beautiful Son, Jesus Christ, to us so that we can make mistakes and that you still love us even when we make mistakes. Thank you for everything that you give us. In your name I pray. Amen. Okay, let's go.
Join me in our prayer of confession. Loving God, you hold us so gently. Teach us the art of letting go of anything that keeps us from your embrace. We grab and clutch things that are often only a passing fad. We go after success and recognition as if they will fill our deepest longings. We place on our relationships unrealistic and unfair expectations. Loving God, lead us to a deeper sense of gratitude, a growing sense of trust in your ability to provide. Teach us what treasures will last. Show us the blessings of giving with joy, loving without conditions, sharing from our abundance. Amen. Our God is good and merciful and sets us free from our bondage to possessions and self-sufficiency. God gives us a loving and giving community to teach us more about God. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. You may be seated. This morning's Old Testament lesson is from the book of Psalm, chapter 51, verses 15 through 19 and can be found on page 510 of your pew Bibles. Again, Psalm chapter 51, verses 15 through 19. Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. For you have no delight in sacrifice. If I were to give a burnt offering, you would not be pleased. The sacrifice acceptable to God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O oh God, you will not despise. Do good to Zion in your good pleasure. Rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. Then you will delight in right sacrifices, in burnt offerings, and whole burnt offerings. Then bulls will be offered on your altar. Our New Testament lesson is Hebrews 5 verses 1 through 10, which can be found on page 215 of your Pew Bibles. Again, that's Hebrews 5 verses 1 through 10. Let us listen for the word of God. Every high priest chosen from among mortals is put in charge of things pertaining to God on their behalf to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. He is able to deal gently with the ignorant and the wayward, since he himself is subject to weakness. And because of this, he must offer sacrifice for his own sins as well as for those of the people. 
And one does not presume to take this honor, but takes it only when called by God, just as Aaron was. So also Christ did not glorify himself in becoming a high priest, but was appointed by the one who said to him, you are my son, today I have begotten you. As he says also in another place, you are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. And having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him, having been designated by God a high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. O oh God, your word is more precious than great riches and sweeter than the purest honey. As we turn to your scripture, send your Holy Spirit of truth and grace into the words we hear so that the good news of your love would shine before our eyes and delight our senses. And so that we cannot help but respond with wonder, faith, and trust. Amen. There was an Episcopal priest shopping for a Harley Davidson motorcycle. The salesman talked about speed, acceleration, risk, and how women love to climb on the back of such a powerful machine. Then he discovered his customer was a priest. Immediately, he changed his approach. He spoke about good mileage, the advantages of 360-degree visibility, and how practical motorcycles are. Writing about this experience later, the, the priest says, Have we told the world that being a Christian is more like riding a lawnmower than a motorcycle? Is the life of faith more safe and sound or dangerous and exciting? The common image of the church is pure lawnmower, slow, deliberate, and plodding. Our task, says the priest, is to take the church out on the open road, give it the gas, and see what this baby will do. To do that, to take the church out there and get it cruising along at a nice clip, we first have to know where the gas comes from and how to fuel the church so that it is out there tearing up the road, so to speak. Today's New Testament lesson from Hebrews in comparing Jesus to a high priest tells us exactly how to keep the church fueled and moving along. Every high priest, says Hebrews, is put in charge of things pertaining to God on the people's behalf to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. Offering gifts and sacrifices to overcome the sins of the world, that's what the church does when it's fueled up and ready to go. This sinful, fallen nature of the world is the road that we travel along and the gifts and sacrifices that we make in the name of Jesus are the fuel of the church. So how do we keep the church fueled up and moving along? To answer that, let's look at today's passage from Hebrews. Here, Christ is described as the high priest who offers 
gifts and sacrifices to overcome the sins of the world. And we know that the church is the body of Christ, the hands and feet and heart of Jesus. Whatever Jesus is accomplishing in this world, he's doing it first and foremost through the church. Without the church, without us as followers of Jesus, the world would not know Jesus as Lord and Savior. So, as we learn about Jesus and the gifts and sacrifices that he made, we learn about ourselves. We learn about the power and purpose of the gifts and sacrifices we make as the body of Christ. Hebrews tells us that Jesus is like a high priest who deals gently with the ignorant and wayward, since even a priest is subject to weakness. This revelation about Jesus as a gentle priest sheds light on one of the things that really frustrates people about the church and this world that we live in. It can be really frustrating to give of yourself as the hands and feet and heart of Jesus while watching the world struggle so much to get things right. There's so much suffering in the world, so much struggle, so much hate, and self-righteousness. How do we maintain hope? How do we keep giving of ourselves? Well, we do that as Jesus did, gently, while always shining light where there is darkness or ignorance, always being a place of guidance and direction for those who are lost, or wayward. As hard as it is to see people miss out on the blessings and guidance of the church, we, like Jesus, deal gently with those who have gone astray. And this means that real and lasting change takes time. For instance, as the pastor of this church, I've helped countless people over the years on your behalf with financial assistance and guidance. As you might expect, some of these folks prove to be their own worst enemy when it comes to taking that next right step. But not all of them. As a church, we've helped countless people through a momentary setback, both members and folks out in the community. We have helped people to get to the next level of self-sufficiency where they can really start cruising along in life and even give back in service to others. Now, in helping people help themselves, I always try to get to the source of their struggle, to create a bridge that gets them over that rough patch. That's one way that we, as the body of Christ, use the fuel of our faith, our church life, to smooth out the twists and turns that people struggle with. And yet, because the church is gracious and gentle with people, because we understand how hard life can be, we have to find a way, as the church, to be in it for the long haul. It's not going to be a quick fix. And it seems like things are actually getting harder and harder for many people. And still, we give of ourselves through the church. We give of our time and talents and treasures. We participate in the life of the church for our sake, for the sake of others, and for the sake of the world. We do all this because we know that in Christ, God will prevail, no matter how long it might take. As Emily Johnson said in our Minute for Mission, next Sunday is Commitment 
Sunday, the day we bring our pledge cards and place them on the Lord's table. This is our celebration of all that we do as a people of faith, as followers of Christ, as members and friends of the church, working and living in the name and spirit of Jesus, in the confidence of his victory, no matter how hard it gets or how long it takes. We don't give to the church because it's easy. It's not. It's not easy to pledge a healthy portion of your money. 10% is a good amount. It's not easy to invest our time and energy in the life of the church. I mean, we're still rebounding from the pandemic. So many friends and family have yet to find their way back. So yes, it's not easy, but we do it anyway. We do it because we are the church. And without the church, this world is lost and wayward, given over to darkness and ignorance when it comes to Jesus Christ. Yes, we are the church, and Jesus is the Lord, our Savior. So we pattern our lives on the life of Jesus. Jesus is described in Hebrews as offering up prayers with reverent submission to the will of God. As it says, in the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him. And he was heard because of his reverent submission. You can think of reverent submission as our action prayers, the things we do that give rise to the blessings of God. It's good and right to go to God in prayer for the needs of this world, the needs of our family and friends, the needs of our community and church. But then we have to put those prayers into action in whatever way we can. Hebrews says that Jesus is the source of salvation for all who obey him. This means that in order to enjoy the blessings of God, we have to follow the way of Jesus, gathering together in his name, giving of ourselves for his sake, and relying on God and his church to make the world a better place. As you prayerfully consider what you will give to the life of the church in 2022, do so with Christ-like confidence in what God is doing for us and through us. Through this church and all of our ministry programs, God is blessing the world with a heartfelt expression of Jesus' care and compassion, his welcome, and embrace his guidance and wisdom. Let us all join next Sunday in celebrating this, this outpouring of Jesus and all that it means for us and for the future of this world. Amen.
Those who are able, please stand for our affirmation of faith. We believe in God, whose love is the source of all life and the desire of our lives, whose love was given a human face in Jesus of Nazareth whose love was crucified by the evil that waits to enslave us all, and whose love, defeating even death, is our glorious promise of freedom. Therefore, though we are sometimes fearful and full of doubt, we trust God, and in the name of Jesus Christ, we commit ourselves in the service of others to seek justice and to live in peace, to care for the earth and to share the commonwealth of God's goodness, to live in the freedom of forgiveness and in the power of the spirit of love. And we commit ourselves in the company of the faithful, past, present, and yet to come, to be the church for the glory of God. Amen. You may be seated. With faith, we give in gratitude and joy. With prayerfulness, we give in sacrifice and love. With hopefulness, we give in commitment to God. Let us pray. 
O Lord, giver of life and source of freedom, we know that all we have received is from your hand. You call us to be stewards of your abundance, the caretakers of all you have entrusted to us. Help us to always use your gifts wisely and teach us to share them generously. Send the Holy Spirit to work through us, bringing your message to those we serve. May our faithful stewardship bear witness to the love of Jesus Christ in our lives. We pray with grateful hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and to be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Amen. <laughs>